So um, tonight we are going to talk about a remedy that is for the central nervous system. And don't we all need this, right? Um, so it's for exhaustion, overwork, worry, memory loss, sleeplessness. Um, it has a lot to do with what's going on in the globe, uh, all over the globe today in the last six months. There's a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger. Um, and this medicine can be very useful. Now, it is not the only one. And I want you to remember this, folks, that anytime I teach you a medicine, generally speaking, unless it's a specific protocol, there are many other choices. Now, protocols don't mean that it's the only way to go either, just so that you know. Um, it, it means that it is a very large percentage of people. When I teach a specific protocol, uh, let me give you an example. Let's say it's um, aconitum 200 and bryonia 30. Aconite, for those of you who don't know this, aconitum 200 with bryonia 30 is the best medicine. It is, happens to be a Banerjee protocol uh, that I learned while I was in India. And it is great for an oncoming cold, a sore throat, a cough. Anytime it's coming on, that's a great combination. And you can take it even throughout. And if it's very severe, we might take it every 15 minutes for the first hour or every couple of hours, depending on the severity. That is a specific protocol. Now, let me just say, it doesn't mean that the only time, or excuse me, this is the only medicine we can use for this condition. It means that it is a medicine that we use for this condition in a very large percentage of the population. So there's a about 80% of the population will respond to this medicine who have these set, this set of conditions. So, but when I'm talking about the medicine I'm going to teach you now for exhaustion and central nervous system, et cetera, um, overwork, worry, sleeplessness, um, especially overstudy, over too much in the head, this medicine I'm going to teach you tonight is not the only one. It just happens to be a good one. And it's definitely worth a try. Now, I'm going to be reading this directly out of my Materia Medica. And I'm going to hold this up for you so that you can see my Materia Medica. And I also want to tell you, you can purchase this on my site. But there are, as I always say, there are other Materia Medicas that you can purchase. Mine is very cursory. Um, it makes it simpler. But you might want something more, and more involved. And then I also have to show you my Materia Medica is in Espanol. And it is being done, it's being translated now into German. I can't wait for that to come out. I'm really looking forward to that. But I actually thought about reading this remedy from my, my Spanish uh, version, uh, but I don't know how good my Spanish is these days. <laughs> so the medicine we're going to learn tonight is Cali, K-A-L-I, Cali Phosphoricum, P-H-O-S. P-H-O-R-I-C-U-M. Kelly Phosphoricum. It, the, the longer version of the word is Kellyum Phosphoricum. But we're going to use Kelly Phosphoricum. And the other word version for this is Kelly Phos, even shorter version. When you look at this, you're going to say, well, wait a minute, isn't this a cell salt? And indeed it is a cell salt, which means it's a subcategory. It's just a category of homeopathic medicines used in the same fashion in many ways. Um, easier to understand because you can study cell salts in a more concise way. I teach it in my uh, study groups. Um, and I think it's in class two, gateway two, gateway one, and then there's gateway two. So I urge you, if you're new to homeopathy, even if you're not, consider joining a study group. You will learn so much more by being involved with other like-minded people because you will hear their stories. And the way that you learn homeopathy, folks, is not just studying it and using it. The way to learn homeopathy is to know cases other people's stories. You hear a story. Wow. She used that for her son in college, by the way, parenthetically, Kelly Foss is an excellent medicine for students who are over studious, who are thinking too much, who are too much in the head. Then they study into the night. They can't uh, fall asleep. They're worried about their grades. They're too focused on the, on thinking. 
learning, memorizing, and studying. So it has affected the central nervous system. They might feel exhaustion beyond what they should feel for, for being in this circumstance. So Kelly Phosphoricum, <clears throat> in a cell salt, we use it generally in a six in the United States. But what I love about the Banerjees, when I spent so much time for, with them in India, was that they used Kelly Phos and all, all the cell salts, generally speaking, in a 3X. So what's the difference? Why use it in a, why would they use it in a 3x and we in the United States use it in a 6x? Well, uh, the difference is that's their experience and this is our experience. However, having said that, when I spent those eight years coming home and then returning again and then coming back, etc., back and forth for eight times, I uh, um, I bowed to the generations of knowledge that they had accumulated. So since that time, although I teach about 6X in Califas and other cell salts, because they're so readily available in the US, I also bow to their knowledge in using a 3X. And so either one of them, 3X or 6X, if you're going to use it in this kind of a circumstance where you're going to use it for central nervous system, sleeplessness, anxiety, worry, freaking out, too much thinking, too much worry. What's happening to our country? Um, is this COVID real? Are they pulling the wool over our eyes? Uh, what about the vaccinations? All of those worries and concerns, if it's getting to you, and I know very few people for whom it is not getting to, um, this might be something you might want to take up. Um, I've used this myself. Uh, it has helped me fall asleep from time to time. Sometimes, you know, tonight when I finish Facebook Live and working with my mighties here, um, I then go to teach a class, a study group, and we meet at the end of their eight-week period, and I meet with them online. And so I often don't finish till, oh, 10 o'clock at night. And when I work until 10, I often have difficulty winding down and getting to sleep right away. So that means that I might take Califas. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. You know, listen, I be, just because I know the medicine to use doesn't mean that I automatically take it. And so I want you to remember that, folks, that just because you know it doesn't mean you use it. I want you to be judicious. I want you to get that information and tamp it down a little bit, keep it kind of in your hip pocket. If the sleeplessness continues, if the anxiety carries on, then by all means, go ahead and give it a try. Now, how do we use this? Um, I have used Kelly Foss um, in a 6X um, and a or a 3X twice daily, generally, and making sure that the second dose is before bed. I've also used it three times daily when we see that it's needed in the middle of the day as well, or at least in the beginning, maybe the first couple of days, we start with three, uh, excuse me, three times daily, and then uh, then move it off to twice daily. Before bed is, is, a, is a, of certainty, you wanna make sure you do it then. But I've also used Kelly, Kellyum Phosphoricum, Kelly Foss, um, in a 200 potency. And when I use that, it is a little more specific. It really is the circumstance under which I just described. And that is a student who's in their head. They're very worried about doing well in school. They're very worried about their grades. They're up until late at night. Study, study, study. No fresh air, no sunshine. And the top floor of a building in, at the, at, at a, uh, in a dormitory at a university. They're not... Um, they're not getting a, a, lots of sunshine and air and their feet are not on the ground. They're not in their sports that they normally do. They can't get away from it. The food is bad <laughs> and, um, and they're stuck there. And when I seek, uh, uh, we don't just give it to someone who is in that circumstance. We give it to someone who is suffering in that circumstance. I hope I'm making myself clear. That just because someone is studying hard, just because they're going into two or three in the morning doesn't mean they necessarily should take this medicine because the key word here is medicine. 
I would rather that we use these when needed. In other words, if there is, is a pathology that occurs as a result of it, insomnia, worry, anxiety, fear, panic, those are all circumstances in which that is worth treating. Those are all symptoms worth treating. So I'm, all, I'm going to read a little bit further to you from my Materia Medica. Um, Califas is used as an antiseptic sometimes, and it prevents and protects against cell disintegration and thwarts the spread of certain presenting infections. Fever above 103.3 degrees can be addressed with this remedy in the in this case the remedy should be given hourly now i'm reading this specifically because i want you to think in terms of uh what we do with fevers i believe that fevers are good especially in children when is a fever not good when someone's had a head injury, and I would not say that the fever itself is bad. I would say the head injury is bad and it's a response. But I like the children get fevers. I think they're important. I think it's uh, critical that we allow the natural responses that occur so that the body can do what it's supposed to do, cook off the virus, cook off the bacteria. So I, although I tell you what medicines can be used for fever, and now let, we're talking about children now, um, I urge parents to just let it go. The hardest part about letting a fever go is the mother. So the mother may need the medicines that we've talked about in the past for anxiety. She may even need Kelly Foss herself for that matter because she may be over-worried about a fever. And let me tell you something about that over-worry. Or that worry about a fever. The problem lies not in the fever. The problem lies in the fact that the mother doesn't realize that fevers are good. Did you hear me? The problem does not lie in the fever itself. The problem lies in the fact that the mother does not understand the mechanism of the human body and allowing the child to have a fever is a very positive thing. Now let's say it's an elderly person. They're in their 80s, and they get a fever. Now, that's a different story. Um, it doesn't mean we suppress the fever. It means we would treat it perhaps homeopathically. Um, we would never, ever suppress a fever. We never use Tylenol. And I'm going to eat my words. I know somebody's going to come up with some situation in which, yeah, no, you really, you know, you can't let a fever go all the time. Well, I have yet to been to experienced um, in all these years of working in homeopathy and all the studies that I have read and all of the research that I've, that I've uh, scoured um, and all of the great minds in homeopathy where a fever uh, was, should be suppressed. I'm not talking about treatment. I'm talking about suppression. So with suppression, I mean an antibiotic, an analgesic, uh, a Tylenol, acetaminophen, et cetera. Okay, so that's my that's my fever spiel. Okay, so let's keep going. So I did write in here college students with too much mental work or who fail, uh, uh, who fall, excuse me, victim to fatigue and collapse. Collapse. That can happen. And we're thinking, what is wrong with this person? This person is is falling apart. What's what's going on? And the child or the young adult is 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 collapsing because they have got too much the central nervous system has given out of sorts so that's when we keep kelly foss on that student's desk as they study or maybe in their pocket or purse um this is an interesting aspect to it kelly foss is an indicated for any symptom that appears after a period of emotional or mental stresses or emotional too mainly fear, insomnia, and anxiety. This remedy acts to soothe outbursts of irritability. Does that sound like any teens that you know? <laughs> Pains related to anguish and nervousness. Not just any old pain. Pain related to anguish and nervousness. Night terrors. That sounds like a child, like a baby or a young child. And oversensitive nerves. Mom, what did you mean by that? That kind of talk. 
you you always say that to me. You are a hypocrite. On and on and on. That is what we're talking about. Oversensitive nerves. When an individual exhaust is exhausted and restless, restless can be part of it. So they might be wiggling their feet. They might be pacing. They might be um, getting up and moving around and then sitting down and then getting up and moving around and is depressed and gloomy over work, studying, strain, or ailments. Kelly Foss will likely bring relief. Now, do you need one dose? No, remember I said generally we use twice a day or three times a day. That is the way you want to use this. You don't want it to be, um, don't expect it to work in one dose, although I have seen that happen. I, I mean, in all of these medicines, the, me the the stories that you hear about homeopathy are often the ones that are that are dramatic. I gave only one remedy. That's the story about my my son who 33 years ago was an infant and um, and I gave him one dose of sulfur and it completely turned him around. Um, there are those incidences and they usually occur, usually, not always, they usually occur for more acute situations because the more extreme the situation, the more extreme or how, the more quickly the medicine often acts. And it's as though this energy is meant by the homeopathic medicine. So it's, I mean, it's just a way of trying to understand how this all works. It can also be used to help people suffering from sciatic pain, central nervous system or nerve, not maybe not central, but nervous back pain and other pains related to the nervous system, especially when those pains are associated with cold, heavy feeling in hands and legs, sour stomach and nausea. But here's another something about, about this medicine for, for the gastrointestinal tract and related to the, um, um, to the central nervous system. And that is, when someone eats and they're hungry, sh hungry shortly after. Now, I'm not talking about one time, but if you notice that someone is kind of chronically hungry, sometimes it can be related to the central nervous system. We don't need to know that necessarily, but what we do need to note is that it occurs. And if it occurs enough times, then we can say that indeed Kelly Foss might be indicated. Now, don't use just one symptom, folks, okay? Don't choose your medicine on one symptom. Build your case. If you see that someone is hungry, often after eating, even though they ate a full meal and they're, they're hungry again, it's often teenagers, by the way, um, then look for other indications that this medicine may be useful. Note whether or not they're sleeping well enough. Note that they're irritable. Note that they are overworked. Note that they're too much in the head. They're it's too mental for them. Their lives are too mental, uh, mentally oriented. Now you're building, you don't have to have all of that, but at least a couple things there so that you can build a good case for the use of a specific medicine in this situation, Kelly Foss. So we might use it three times a day in Kelly Foss three. We might use it three times, two to three times a day in Kelly Foss six. Kelly Foss six is very easily found. Kelly Foss three is more difficult. You have to be a student or client of mine to buy from OHM Pharmacy, and they're the ones who sell it in a three. So let's see. Hi, Michelle. Paul, first time here is a mighty member. Yay, yay, yay for mighty members. April in Sacramento. Lynn from Oklahoma. Carl, uh, Carla. Hi from Stewart. Not far from me at all. You're only 45 minutes away from me in Stewart, Florida. Mighty members, yay. <laughs> Hi, Joe from Wisconsin. Stockbridge, Harry from Pennsylvania. First time member, never did a social media gig. Laugh out loud, still have flip phone. <laughs> Harry, you're my kind of guy. <laughs> I love it. Hi, Joe from Canada. This is so great to connect live with you. Thanks for your techie people. I am a mighty also. Yes, thank God. Thank, thank God for my techie. My techie people are my son and my husband. <laughs> um, all righty. Anyone else um, have a player error? I hope you're not having any more errors. Is, is uh, my name coming up with a type? Uh, I'm not sure I know what that means, but Paulette, you are certainly here. First time listening as a mighty member. Hi, watching from mighty members. Thanks with hearts. Okay, let's get back to folks in Facebook Live. New to this, thanks. Hi, I'm really glad that you're new. When, th there's so much to be learned here. 
I have a hard time containing myself. There's so I'm bursting at the seams. There's so much I want to teach you. There's so much to learn in homeopathy. It is the medicine of the people. It is another way of putting it. It is God's medicine. There's no middleman. Yes, there's a pharmacy that manufactures these, but do you see the price of these medicines? They're, you know, $12 and you can cure a migraine. You can cure. I mean, I won't even go on with all that you can do. Otitis media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Go to my blog, folks. If you haven't spent time there, it's a therapeutic index. And what I mean by that is when people purchase my Materia Medica, they often say, well, I thought I was going to get all the names of the conditions and then what medicine to use, what potency, what frequency. No, no, no. That's not what a Materia Medica is. A Materia Medica is actually a listing of the homeopathic medicines, the most commonly used homeopathic medicines, and their symptoms that they the symptoms that they address. A therapeutic index is um, otitis media, ear infection. What do I use for otitis media? And then it gives you the name of the medicine, the potency, and the frequency. That is my blog. Now, I don't have every single condition up there because uh, last I read, there are something like 6,000 human sufferings, conditions, and diseases. And so if I were to, I would have to have been doing this for about 100 years. <laughs> and I've only been authoring this blog for 11. <laughs> uh, Kelly Foss and brain overload from brain injury on frontal lobe. Now, I would not use this as a first medicine for um, a brain injury, but I would use this for the feeling of overload. The, the medicine I would use would be much different for the actual injury itself. So I would consider both of those medicines. Yep, that's the way I would look at this. Um, can you explain what Mighty Members is in a nutshell? Well, folks, um, uh, our, it's, in a, it's in a little space, <laughs> a virtual space. You pay, I think it's $9.90 or $9.50 per month. Um, and there's a discount if you pay for a whole year in advance. And what it is, is I uh, um, write something every day, even if it's just a um, something to keep people uplifted. So it's not 100% homeopathy, but there is a lot, a lot of homeopathy. And then I do videos. I do little presentations uh, once a week. We put them out. I'm, I'm dying to do more, and I actually am planning to do more at some point. Um, with bits of information on how to use this medicine, how to use that medicine, why you need to uh, learn this, um, what to be, what to stay away from. So, um, gotta love that. Florida is phase three. You bet, Mary. I hope I've I've given you a good exp explanation of it. Kelly Foss in ADHD. Kelly Foss could be considered for ADHD, but I go much deeper. There are bigger, more, more powerful medicines. And not that Kelly Foss doesn't have power. Don't get me wrong. But let's put it this way. There are more specific medicines for ADHD. And it was, I discussed that last week in my blog. And I also uh, discuss it very thoroughly in my course, Mindful Homeopathy. But always try the blog first. And that's what I always say. Don't spend money first. Spend time first. Um, okay. How about feeling nervousness inside and shaky? Yes, it can be. Absolutely. Lacks me. Yes. Is it good for overthinking in the sense of dwelling on things from uh, dwelling on things from the past or intellect, intellectual, oh, these things jump around, or intellectual overthinking? If it is a condition, in other words, if the person is just, that's just their characteristic, it's just their little, little pleasurable in, uh, idiosyncrasy, leave it alone, don't treat it. But if it becomes a pathology, a condition where the person can't get past this or other people don't like being around them because of it, yeah, that's when you start considering using medicines. Um, all right. Hi from Irving, Texas. Okay, would you do Kelly Foss for a person always overthinking decisions? Overthinking decisions is it's a possibility, but I think more in terms of um, someone who is indecisive or someone who is um, who has obsessive compulsive disorder. So if it goes that far, then I would that would not be my first one, but I would certainly consider it. 
Hi, Tammy from the Florida Keys. Beautiful Florida Keys. I was my husband and I were just down there about a month or so ago to get away for a little while. Um, all right, let me go back up. Would you automatically use this for cola synthesis? Um, with cold synthesis for stomach aches and emotional upset. Well, it certainly is a possibility. Yes, you're very welcome, Martine. In your Materia Medica, you mentioned it can strengthen muscles, including sphincters. Would you recommend for functional incontinence? Yes, I would consider it. I'm not telling you that's an absolute, but I definitely would consider it. Um, all right. Tag and share to someone. Yes, please tag and share this. Please send this to others. We want to get homeopathy really on the map. Did you know that homeopathy is the second most commonly used medicine in the United States? Now, albeit up here is conventional <laughs> medicine. And in terms of numbers, we don't have the same kind of numbers that they have. But it's the second most used. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Tina, hi. Love you too, Tina. Wish I could help you faster, Tina. Uh, maybe may this be used with Ignatia or should it stand alone? Liberty, that's a uh, very Liberty Veritas. Oh wow, what a great name. Okay, so um, you could uh, one could use both of those. You know what? Um, I I am so in love with Ignatia. Ignatia, for those who are new, Ignatia two hundred. Check it out on my blog. I talk about it a lot. I'm so enamored by the what Ignatia 200 is capable of doing twice daily that I would start there and see what that can do. And then keep Kelly Foss in your hip pocket and hold on to it should it be needed. All righty. Let's get back to my mighty cell salts in higher doses at OHM. Yeah, they have them at OHM. Harry may try clicking on top left face. Okay, someone's giving Harry some. <laughs> Hi, Eileen. I mean, excuse me, Elaine. I recommend Califas 6X and Hypericum 200 for Bell's palsy facial paralysis. Any thoughts? I think that's an excellent combination. Did you see that, folks? You who are on Facebook are not seeing my mighty members here. She's saying, Elaine, who is one of my best students and a client and now becoming a friend, Califas 6X as well as Hypericum 200 for Bell's palsy, facial paralysis. Absolutely. I would strongly consider that. Absolutely. Uh, Portland, Oregon. Oh, Portland. Poor Portland. Um, that she is being tested for kidneys, heart failure. Da, 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 da. I suggested cell salts. I'm going to have her listen to this Facebook Live. So timely. Yes. You know what? Everything in life is timely. It's amazing how these things just come to us when we need it. Well, I could talk all night, but unfortunately I've got, or fortunately, because I enjoyed these, these study groups, I'm going off to my study group and I will see you next week. Share this. Love you all. Goodbye, mwah, my mighties. And <laughs> mwah, goodbye, Facebook Live people. It's wonderful to have you all. God bless all of you. And now I got to figure out how I get off of this darn thing.